mentioned some recent initiatives there, Sam, you know, about tackling and, and, and changes to the game. Like, are, are there any sports that you've seen that have made significant progress in handling concussions, potentially serving as, as models for, for rugby, whether it's male or female, to follow? Um, I know sports like boxing and martial arts have strict medical suspensions after, after knockouts. Mm. Um, are there protocols that you've seen in other sports that you think should or could be introduced into the game of rugby? I think there's there's some simple things around reducing exposure, which certainly happened in the NFL after the huge lawsuit in 2013, um, where the players' union really mobilised and, and basically negotiated some proper protections for the players around um, minimising contact in training, almost to zero during the season. Um the RFU's own data in England has recently shown that still um, injuries in training, concussions in training are absolutely through the roof. It's it's just, I, I cannot understand how slow rugby union has been to pick up on this fact that they're still damaging their players during the week. It, it, there's, a, there's lots of talk around minimising um, contact during the week. There's lots of statements made, um, protocols put in place, but evidently there isn't being checked, there isn't changing. And um, so there's a simple win there to just basically pretty much um, stop contact training during the season. Um, You know, they've done it in the NFL. It's had absolutely no apparent um, effect on the physicality of the the actual matches. It still looks like the same sport. Um, constantly educating. I think that's where I give credit to rugby's governing bodies. I think they have attempted to educate um, their community more, um, the rugby community, although I think a lot more can be done. Be more transparent about it. Um, And then, you know, as I touched on before, limit the amount of games that the professionals play um, and try to find ways to actually lessen the collisions. But it's, it's really difficult because... We see it all the time now in the social media world that we dominated world that we live in. The collisions, they are rugby's clickbait, basically. That that is what pe- people love to see. But you know, people love to watch the gladiators during Roman times, you know, and, and people love to see people getting killed. And I think, you know, it, what is sport? You know, and I, I think we saw we've seen in Australia, I think it's been in the last twenty four hours, in fact, a boxer who's ended up with a, a bleed on his brain and um you know what, what's it's it's a, a cultural conversation i guess as to what is acceptable and you know to me um i ne- i basically and it was partly reading paul kimmage's book engage with matt, matt hampson it was like what's a tolerable acceptable risk from sport and i got to the conclusion that basically the bottom line should be no one should die when they're playing sport and i you know mm-hmm. That's the conclusion that Formula One drew. It took Ayrton Senna, sadly, to, and Roland Ratzenberg to, to die in massively high-profile um, uh, crash in, in the Grand Prix. But for me, people talk about in rugby, someone's going to have to die for this to, to change things. But lots of people have died playing rugby, lots. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know, and, and that is they're not really freak injuries when people die on a rugby pitch. It's it's not normal but it does happen and to me that is unacceptable um ben robinson dying on a rugby field was unacceptable um and that's become my baseline i guess of of what's acceptable um so i don't think you should die if you run on a sports field it's not war it's entertainment and it's fun and i don't think we should forget that 